Hey guys, welcome to another video. This video is about the atomic number, mass number, how to calculate protons, electrons, and neutrons. So let's get started. Now, here's an element, okay, in a form you guys might have seen on TV or cartoons or the internet, whatever. What makes one element different from another? There's a characteristic of these elements and why they are different from each other. <clears throat> well, it has to deal with something in the center. Well, your answer is the protons. Protons make one element different from the other. Some elements lose electrons, some elements gain electrons, but in theory we run off of the number of protons to differentiate the difference between one atom and the next. Neutrons can be lost, neutrons can be gained, that's down the road, but protons is the key. Now, very important number, the atomic number. Okay, it's found on the periodic table. So that is one tool that you're going to need for this. Okay, looking at your periodic table, you're going to see the atomic number. Somewhere on your periodic table there should be a key, and it could identify the parts of each portion of the element and the certain things about the element that you need to know. Now the atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus and that's represented by the letter Z. Okay so here's an example of what a symbol looks like on the periodic table. Sometimes they're a little different but this is the common one. Now the whole number on top is the atomic number. This number on the bottom is not. This is something else. This has a decimal. This is basically the weighted average. Okay. Now, the atomic number is the whole number, which in essence is the number of protons. And the number of protons in a neutral atom equals the electrons. So positive and negative charges will balance each other out. So refer to your periodic table to determine each atom's specific atomic number. So let's look here. Let's look at three elements, hydrogen, fluorine, and aluminum. So if you look on the periodic table, you're going to find that hydrogen has the atomic number one. That means it has one proton. Fluorine has nine for the atomic number, therefore it has nine protons. Aluminum is a number 13, which means it has 13 protons. Therefore, the protons will equal the electrons in a neutral atom. So these two are going to be the same. Now, the next important part of the periodic table is the mass number, which is the total number of protons and neutrons. So it's protons essentially plus neutrons. Now, this is the number right down here. Mass. Okay. It's 15.999. Okay. Why are there decimals there? Well, it has to deal with how it's calculated. Now, the mass number is essentially the weight or most of the mass of the element, and it's found in the nucleus, the protons and the neutrons. And in this chapter, we're going to round to a whole number. Okay. So for oxygen, if you look at oxygen, we're going to see that the mass number on the periodic table is 15.99. So we're going to round that to 16. Carbon is 12.01. We are going to round that to 12. Copper is 63.45. We will round that to 64. And chlorine, it's a little tricky. We're going to round this one to 35. Um, possibly for the honors class, there might be an assignment that you have to use 35.45, but right now we're just going to round it to 35. Now, we know how to find the number of protons. We know how to find the number of electrons. You look at the atomic number. How do you find the number of neutrons? Well, it's very simple. You're going to simply subtract the atomic number from the mass number. Why? Well, the mass number is the number of protons and neutrons. If you subtract the atomic number from mass number, that basically cancel out the protons. Okay, so to calculate the neutrons, it's mass number, which is the A, minus the atomic number Z. Okay, so let's look here. <clears throat> we have your mass column, atomic number column, 
number of neutrons column. Okay, so we are going to use our periodic table and we're going to fill this up. Okay, so let me grab my little pen. Okay, so the mass number of lithium is 7. The atomic number is 3. So we subtract these two, 7 minus 3, and we get 4 neutrons. Strontium's mass number is 88. Okay, its atomic number is 38. Okay, subtract the 2, and you get 50 neutrons. Okay. Antimony is 122. Atomic number 51. You subtract these two, you should get 71. Okay, simple as that. Carbon is 12. Atomic number is 6. Subtract those two, you get 6 neutrons. Okay. Now pause the video, find the mass number, atomic number for rhodium and tungsten, subtract the mass number and the atomic number, and calculate the number of neutrons. And your sum of all these should equal 299. So go ahead and do that right now. All right, so let's check. Rhodium, mass number is 103. Atomic number 45. You subtract those two and you should get 58. Okay. Over here, tungsten 184 for the mass number. 70. Or for the atomic number, subtract those two and you should get 1, 1, 0, 110. Okay? So it's not too hard. Now there's one other thing we need to know before we move on and do isotopes and whatnot. And that's something called uh, shorthand notation. Shorthand notation is just a simple way to write um, elements. And the reason why we have it is for when we do isotopes or if there's a reading that you have to do. Um, I've seen it written in scientific journals. Um, it's just an abbreviated version to show the mass number, the atomic number, while speaking about the element itself. Okay. Now, shorthand notation has a definition. Okay. It's A over Z next to the X. Okay. This is a generic formula for all the elements. So you look at any element. You put the symbol in place of the X, and you put the mass number here and the atomic number here. Superscript, subscript. Okay, let's look at an element to explain. Here we have helium. Your element goes here. Your mass number in whole number form goes there. And your atomic number goes here. And that's it. That's called the shorthand notation. There is a longhand notation we'll look at when we do isotopes as well and this will be incorporated with that too so it's something you need to remember it's important in chemistry all right guys that's where we're stopping